Hi, and welcome back again to Spirituality with a Spin. I am Ryan Keyes, your host, and today we're going to continue the taboo topics from Thursday and hopefully not step on too many toes. We had discussed divorce and separation, some of the issues surrounding that involving the twin flame or the soulmate, divine partnership, that purposed relationship coming together. Today we're going to talk about love, some of the aspects of love, some of the obstacles in love, and then we're going to talk a little bit about men at the end. We're going to talk to men and about men and help women understand men maybe just a little bit more. If you're interested in that, I will see you inside. Hi, and welcome back again to Spirituality with a Spin. I am Ryan Keyes, your host. So today we're gonna to continue the subject matter that we started on Thursday, which was talking about taboo subjects, because I believe that there's nothing too taboo when it comes to you. And then we're also going to go into some of the things about love, about pain, about different things involving love, maybe a new concept for loving. And we're gonna also talk about men. We're gonna to talk to men and about men and help women understand men maybe a little bit more. So if we step on your toes, I apologize in the beginning. But before I go forward, I wanted to say a statement that I believe holds a lot of weight. And when you just think about that very statement, it will help you to understand these things a little bit deeper. Love is to souls what gravity is to matter. Okay, let me say it one more time. Love is to souls what gravity is to matter. You see, a lot of times we think about it as love is our main goal but we don't understand the actual art of loving. We don't actually understand the nature of loving and what that means, especially as a man. So love really, truly is in the nature of oneness. So if we approach it from the self, love is not about that. Love is about separation because it's a singular event. It's involving me and you. So we're not seeing the universal oneness coming together in that big picture. So we tend to minimize the effectiveness of that love. We tend to focus on things that will actually affect that, whether it's experience or expression. And instead of being able to see it through the eyes of the higher self or the soul, we see it very singular through our senses, which is a body bound basis, which creates that rift that rips us apart sometimes. So the body is bound to only seeing through space and time. You hear me? The body is bound to see only through space and time. The soul, the higher self or source, doesn't operate on the same time or the same type of space and time that the body does. So the body is bound to being, being here, being in the moment, being now. And that's where the soul actually can sit right down in the body. Love is to souls what gravity is to matter. Now let me hear you say that. Love is to souls what gravity is to matter. So if you see that love is your goal and you ask yourself, well, why does love equate sometimes pain or suffering or distance? And the answer to that is that love is the soul's affinity for oneness. But yet we have to understand that loving through anything but the higher self can keep you from being in oneness. It keeps you in a state of experience and expression on a self singular level instead of a universal level because the body is bound to see only through what its senses are and if you are operating at a base level at a root level you are bound to this concept of seeing only what you can see through your senses you have to elevate your experience inside you have to begin to nurture that very thing which will nudge you into the now because the body operates like you see like my body will leave a scar even though it repairs itself completely every seven years. Why? Because the body is reminding me of a past trauma. So if you operate only from the 3D, you're going to always remind yourself of past traumas, thereby limiting your ability to be in the present, which is going to be an opponent of oneness, which is the universal consciousness coming to you and calling out to you right now. 
So if you've had a catalyst event in your life, like a twin flame or something major, or I don't like to throw labels on them, but someone came into your life and rocked your world, or an event, this is the creator, this is the architect, the grand source, the designer, calling out to you to try to wake you up, rattling your cage, because change has to happen. We have to have change. Everything going around on and on right now is screaming out for change. Just remember, the body is bound to only what it sees through space and time. Space and time are the very things which will provide the obstacles in you being able to love unconditionally. The body is bound by being. Being here, being alive, being in line, being together. Those things are spatial. They revolve around space and time. If you begin to see yourself from a different side of things, if you begin to see yourself more open, more alive, more aware, if you're able to connect to consciousness, you're going to actually be able to operate from that universal love. Now, one of the other things I'd like to say is that the soul sees no separation and that source is always in sync. Let me say that one more time. The soul sees no separation and source is always in sync. So source is your base root. Source sits inside of your chest. We had talked about all the information from the masculine coming from the crown down, which is the gathering of all this soulful knowledge. We've talked about the, the energy from the bottom up, the female energy coming up with the nurturing, flexibility, and all the emotional and all the enthusiastic concepts which will help us to build the fire which will feed us. Now, if you wanted to see why does doubt creep in, why does pain creep in when it comes to the, the main issues surrounding love and relationships, some of the things that actually, cause, that actually cause divorce, which actually cause a breakdown of communication, one's going to be differences. We all see things through difference, again, because space and time. We're seeing differences because we're only seeing with our eyes. We're not seeing with our soul. We're not aligning ourselves to a higher level of consciousness. The other thing is that we're seeing through fear. Now, fear is the process of understanding that something has hurt you or could hurt you. But love should never be something that hurts. Because if you love from a place of universal love, from an opening, you begin to allow yourself. The true love comes from allowing and letting go. Every day is different. Every day you're going to wake up different. You're different every day. So love will never be the same. But yet we fight to hold on to love as it is static. The only thing that you can do is be able to see yourself past the fear, past the trauma. Allow those things to stay in the past like in the story of in the Old Testament when it talked about that Lot was leaving Sodom and Gomorrah they were told not to look back when his wife looked back she turned into a pillar of salt which is very much a preservative even in that day so she became a, a place of preserving the past which punished her and separated her from being here in the moment so the past is very very traumatic trauma only can live with the light of what you're giving it today. It's like trying to burn something that's already burned completely through. So when you revive it, it's alive. And it's not alive from then, it's alive in the now. So understand also that it prevents intimacy. Intimacy is a very difficult place for many men. Why? Because the lack of experienced examples. Most men never were told to be open. We're never told that Power is not about how you are powerful, but it's about how you express yourself. So once you start understanding these other dynamics and how love can be very, um, uh, love can be a trigger for all of these things, because when you're seeing space and time from a body bound love, you are operating from fear, from intimacy in a state of fear. So as you begin to see that the blame and the shame that has shifted you and has prevented you from seeing the person that you could be, you have to understand that blame has been issued because you've accepted it. Shame is a constitution of the blame. So that if you live in a state of blame, if you live in a state of shame, it's going to affect how you see yourself. And if you see yourself in this state, Presenting yourself to someone else, you're going to tend to lean to the unauthentic. You're going to tend to try to be something you're not. And then that's going to create a rift. It's going to begin to create some type of exacerbated trauma from the past. So you cover it up. Now, as I was saying, macho has nothing to do with manliness. 
Power has nothing to do with peace. Inner peace is a place where you understand that space and time have affected the body, have affected your, your place of where you're operating from, and you've been told that being powerful is about obtaining things. Love is not something that you obtain, it's something that you experience, it's something that evolves into a place of oneness. Love is also not about ownership, so love isn't about establishing blame or shame or ownership over another person. As a man, we like to own things because we're told owning things is a measure of our manhood. Not so. That's society trying to condition you, trying to subordinate you into a state of suffering. Now, once you begin to understand that what you possess isn't who you are, and what you possess has nothing to do with passion, then you're going to open your awareness so that you can begin to present yourself here in the present. Part of passion, part of intimacy. This will take you beyond that blame, beyond that shame, beyond those sexual issues or sexual intimacy issues. You will begin to ask and open yourself. Now, ladies, one of the things that will be a key concept in opening up the avenue for communication is allowing a safe space. Men, asking for help isn't being weak. Ladies, admonish that. Ladies, allow that man to ask you for help. If he needs help in something, if he wants your opinion, present it to him. Give him a, a place that's safe. Men also understand touch. Touch is important. Intimacy is important. Ladies, support that man. The man that you want, the man that you see, men, be the man that you are in the beginning. Don't change for anyone. People need to come from a place of co-independence. Be the person that you fell in love with, always. If you lose sight of the person you fell in love with, then who you became is something that is a consistency of experience and expression based on past, based on interpretation through the body. Sounds confusing, but it's true. So you don't want to become something for someone else because then now you're coming from a place of shame because you're ashamed of what you are, who you are. So you've shifted that. Now, if you embrace certain things, if you become interested in different topics, if you expand your awareness, that's different. But changing yourself is much different. Be independent. Be the person that you fell in love with. Women, always understand that the nature of the body of a man, the nature of masculinity, is always going to be about protecting, about serving, and providing. Now, men, understand that the nature of a woman is about providing, is about being supple, is about passion, and is about nurturing. So understand those key concepts, and then you come from those places, and you look for a place of oneness. Now, in a higher level of relationship, in a higher place of self, compassion needs to be seated for front and center, because compassion and communication are the key cornerstones for having a good, solid relationship and foundation. If you understand that expression will be your guide to pleasure, express yourself fully, express yourself openly, be authentic in your expression, and this will help open that path to intimacy. This will help open that path to a new exploration when it comes to passion. We're going to talk about touch and tenderness coming up. We're also going to address some of those taboo topics about sex. Not that I'm going to go into the, the articles of sex, but I'm going to talk about the nature of it coming from the perspective of a man and how if you begin to look at it from an awakened status that that can help you to be able to ascend through your your internal intimacy self is very important when it comes to sex but seeing yourself and seeing the other person as one in a state of oneness beyond space and time will enhance that experience to such a high level that you will expand everything about that experience. When, you're being, when your goal is to hug someone from the inside out, to see that you are part of them, that every even the skin is, is part of you, every little aspect of that nurturing self becomes one, then you've got something to work with. Then you're coming from a place of peace and understanding. Now, Understand, once again, I'm just going to recap just one thing. There's a couple issues that affect you from being body-bound. You've got blame, shame, fear, lack of intimacy. You've got differences, right? You've got addictions that also come up. And a lot of these are from the lack of an experienced example. Begin to explore things. Begin to become your own example. Learn from other people's experience. Listen, look, learn, read. Um, all these things are pivotal in your evaluation of being here in the moment. Don't come from a place of blame and shame. Blame and shame will always create suffering. And remember, 
at the very core of this. These are just tools and tips to help you become more available, more vulnerable, more aware. Understanding that sensuality and sensitivity start with understanding yourself and being your higher self. Understanding that sex isn't love and that marriage is about ownership and that ownership has nothing to do with oneness and the experience of love. If you want to learn more, come to my site, divineloveacademy.com. Get involved. We're doing master classes. We're going forward. We're changing lives. Do the mirror work. There's a link below. It's going to help you reestablish that connection with soul and source inside of yourself so you can begin to get that, uh, that solid connection so you understand the vibrancy that you're missing out on. Now again, I say, love, life, allowing, is all the secrets to being able to experience this life as a conscious being. Don't be bound by the body. Become a master of the 3D, a master of matter. Understanding that the body is here to serve you, is a vehicle, is a car that you're driving. You are the soul that is the source that empowers the very matter that manifested here as you. That means you're not a victim. That means that you're completely empowered, you're centered, and this is where you wanted to be. This is what you wanted to see. Don't allow just your senses to rule you. Don't be a creature of sensation. Understand that senses are the experience and the expression as a singular entity, but you are not singular. You come from a place of universal oneness. And when you begin to tap into that universal oneness, that is where all the fun is. That is where all the juicy stuff is. I love this and you can tell. And I know that once you begin to embrace these topics, you too are gonna to find a, a new sustenance there. So women, understand, give your men a safe place. Be open, be vulnerable. Men, vulnerability is your victory. Power has nothing to do with being compassionate. Inner peace, peaceful ways will help you more than power anytime when it comes to pleasure. And pleasure has nothing to do with just the body. Pleasure comes from a state of being in a higher state of consciousness. Physical pleasure does exist, but it has nothing to do with spiritual awareness and spiritual experience. The coming together of two souls that are divine, that are melding together. Now that will blow your mind. We've spent a lot of time over the last few months building from the bottom up, trying to break ground so that we can fertilize that soil so you can plant those seeds for success. Now, what does success look like? Success looks like oneness. It looks like togetherness. It looks like you're going to be able to come together in a higher level of understanding who you are to help you help yourself. Now, this is the beginning of a nine year cycle. This first year is very pivotal. If you are not getting involved, if you're not doing the work, it will not work out. I have a course called The Laws of Love. I've got my Twin Flame course coming out and I'm doing a master class every Sunday. You can go there and check that out at the divinelove-academy.com. I encourage you to get involved. If not, check my other social media, Facebook, Instagram. I'm very active daily every day. We've got groups in your area where people are coming together, meeting as one and getting out there, getting to become masters of this 3D matter. So we'll talk about those things and more in the upcoming weeks. Peace, light, and love. I will see you on the other side. <laughs> yes, I will.